Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Build Computers. Today I'm going to talk to you about fans, specifically 4-pin fans and 3-pin fans. So when you're picking out fans for your computer, or if you've already got fans in your computer, or fans that came with your case, um, you may notice that sometimes they are 4-pin fans, and they've got 4 pins on them, and sometimes they're 3 pin fans with 3 pins on them. So what's the difference between these two? Which ones do you need and which ones should you get? So firstly, here's the short answer. 4 pin fans are better. Um, 4 pin fans are better than 3 pin fans because you have a greater level of control over the speed of a 4 pin fan. And that's down to the way that the fan is controlled by the computer. So. Um, four pin fans are always superior, which is why you'll generally find that three pin fans are cheaper and generally the things that come in cases or are just lower cost in general. So you might ask yourself, okay, well, uh, firstly, what gives me more control over this and what effect does that have over my usage of it? Will I notice the difference? Um, and that is a complicated question. So firstly, in order to answer that, I'll show you how these two types of fans are controlled. So the three pin fan, which is the simpler version, is controlled using voltage. It's also known as just DC control, direct current. Although really it's controlled by the voltage, not the current. So DC isn't really a very good way of putting it, but this is how a lot of programs uh, display it as, either DC or voltage controlled. So the way this works is the three pins on this thing, you've got a ground, a zero volts, uh, a live or a 12 volts and a speed sensor or a taco pin. So you've got ground, power and speed sensor. And the speed sensor will just send a signal from the fan back to the computer to report how quickly it's spinning so you know how fast it's going. Um, and in order to control the speed of the fan you just lower the voltage. So at the moment this fan is a 12 volt fan and if we run it at say eight volts, then it's gonna spin slower because it doesn't have enough power. So it'll naturally slow down. And that seems very straightforward. But the problem with this is, is that eventually when you take the voltage low enough, it's going to get down to the point where there's not enough energy to spin the motor anymore. And the fan will stall, it will stop spinning. Even though there's power going to it, there's not enough power to actually turn the rotor around. And on most fans, this will generally happen at around six or seven volts or so. That's as low as you can go without them stalling. Um, so let me show you one of these in action. Up here, I have a three pin fan plugged into a computer and I've got my multimeter showing the voltage going into the fan. So to do that, out in the corner here, we can see the fan is plugged into a motherboard and I've got my, my probes from my multimeter probing the, the uh, zero and 12 volt pins of the fan. So in the BIOS, I've gone in and configured this setup so I can very quickly change the fan speed and show you the result. So right now we're at, a, we're at 100%. And that is giving us, if I go over to fan speeds, that is giving us about you know the low 900s. In the bottom left of the screen there on chassis two, we're getting about 900 RPM. That'll go up a bit if I take it off the desk because it's just blowing into the desk at the moment. So yeah, as you can see, with some free air around it, we actually get about 950. Um, and you can see where the static pressure of the desk is slowing the fan down there. So yeah, that's that. Anyway, let's go back in and let's change the duty cycle to, um, let's change it down to 80% speed. Now, it's incorrect to call it a duty cycle at the moment because we're not applying a duty cycle to it, we're changing the voltage. However, for simplicity, they just call it a percentage. So let's change it to 80% and see what that gives us. So immediately, as you can see, the voltage has dropped to 10.2 volts. So we've knocked two volts out of it. And if I go over to speed, we've dropped to about 800 RPM. So that's all well and good. We have control of the fan, but as I mentioned, we can only go so low. And in this, uh, in this Asus BIOS, the lowest it will allow me to take it is 60%. If I try to go to 50, it will just notch me up to 60 again. So it's, it's landed on 60% and now we're running at 8.2. So now we're down to 8.2 volts and that's as low as it will let me take this fan. Unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, that's as low as we can go. And if we check the fan speed of that, 
we're now sitting at about 700 RPM. So that's as low as we can go. Does that change at all if I lift the fan up? No, it doesn't, because we're still applying the same amount of driving force to the fan. So 8.2 volts is as low as we could go on voltage controlled with a three pin fan. And, you know, 700 RPM is quiet ish. I wouldn't call it silent, but it's quiet ish, but also it's not very fast either. Um, so, you know, we've got a pretty narrow band. We've got 700 to 1000 RPM. That's only 300 RPMs worth of control. So it's a very narrow window. Fine. OK, let's plug in the four pin fan and let's see what that one does. Oh, we're going to have to change sides because this knock to a fan has a short cable on it, which I didn't account for when I set up at the start of this video. Right, there's our knock to a fan. You can see it's spinning for posterity. <laughs> and once again, I'm going to probe at 12 and 0 volts. And because we're on the same settings as the previous fan, as you can see, we're on 8.2 volts. So first of all, let's go in and dial this thing up to 100. So I'm going to dial in 100. Now, this fan is significantly more powerful than the NZXT fan. So at full tilt, it's at 1300 RPM. And if I give it some open space, it'll actually pick up to about 1500. So there you go. This fan can go much faster. And this is where we see the first difference with a four pin versus a three pin fan. Because the three pin fan can only be spun down to a reasonably modest speed, they have capped its maximum speed to prevent the fan from being too loud. Because if we run this thing at the same speed, if I drop this thing back down to 60%, 60 percent on the end on the three pin fan was 700 RPM, whereas 60 percent on this fan is still a thousand RPM. So if they allow, if NZXT allowed that three pin fan to go as fast as it could, its minimum speed would still actually be quite loud. So they've capped the maximum speed of that of that fan in order to prevent it from being loud on its quietest setting. So the first advantage of the four pin fan that we found is that manufacturers will let the fan go much faster because they know that you can dial that down. And that's what I'll show you now. So let's change the fan over to PWM mode. And once again, let's dial it up to 100. OK, so we're back to our previous settings. Maximum speed, 12 volts output. Now let's chop it down to 50%. OK, so we're now at 50% speed, which is lower than we could go with the other fan already. And if we check the speed of the fan, our rotation speed is down to just shy of 800 RPM. So as you can see, we've now got a very, very broad range already. We've gone from 1500 down to 800. But what's going on here? We're still at 12 volts. It's still 12.3 volts. And if I go down lower, let's go down to the minimum that this BIOS will let me. 20% speed. You can see the fan spooling down now. 20% speed. We're now down to 300 RPM. We've gone from 1500 down to 300 RPM. Now that's quiet. But we're still at 12 volts. So how's it doing it? It's doing it with a PWM signal. So, but the problem is, is that we can't read a PWM signal just from the voltage here. Um, so how do we figure out what's going on? How do I demonstrate this to you? Well, what I can do, I can move my red wire over to the PWM signal. And as you can see, there's a little one volt digital signal here. And if we take that up to frequency mode, there is a 23.3 kilohertz wave on here. There is a digital signal at 23 kilohertz. So something is going on here. And if I had a more advanced multimeter, I could even see the duty cycle of it, but I don't. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to change my multimeter out for an oscilloscope albeit a really cheap oscilloscope, but still. So let's turn that off, put it to one side. Aha, now we have a much more interesting picture going on. So on my pocket oscilloscope, 
I'm now probing the PWM wire of the fan, the fourth pin, the magical blue fourth pin on the fan. And as you can see, we've got, I mean, the frequency is reading a bit high at the moment. It's reading at about 25 kilohertz, but that's because my probing method is really sketchy. This oscilloscope is really sketchy and my equipment is really sketchy. However, it's in the right ballpark. It's approximately 23 or 25 kilohertz. But what we can see here is a duty cycle of about 25%. And you can see that this digital signal here is turning on for a short amount of time and then turning off again. So what's going on here is this is a PWM wave, a pulse width modulated wave. And the start from the start of the first wave, so at this point here, up to the start of the next wave here, so from this peak to this peak, that is one cycle. And each cycle, it's going through 23,000 cycles a second. So it goes on and then off 23,000 times a second, so 23 kilohertz. And we can look at it turning on and off here. Each one of these small squares on the back of the screen is 10 microseconds. So you can do the math there to figure out how quickly the signal is switching on and off. And that's why we need an oscilloscope to look at it, because, you know, no multimeter is that fast. It's not able to visualize this. So what we'll do now is we'll change the due, we'll change our fan speed up to 50%. So our fan has sped up. But more importantly, as you can see, the wave has changed. So now we're up to 50% duty cycle and this peak has gotten wider. So for half of the wave, so from here to here, for half of that period, we're in an on state and then we go off again. And if I go up to 80% speed, now the duty cycle has gone up. And again, it's not an exact number because of probing and things like that. But as you can see, for about 80% of the time, we're now in an on state and it's only switching off for brief periods of time. If I go up to 95, see, as you can see now, we're on nearly all of the time. And then just for a little blip, it just goes off. And that's what's just notching the speed down a bit. So now let's tank it again, 20%, bam. And now we're at the opposite end of the spectrum. The fan spins down because it's only being told to turn on for just 25, well, indicated about 25% of the time it's in an on state. And for the rest of the time, the fan is off. It's still getting that full 12 volts, but it is not using that power. So what's going on here is the fan is just turning on and off really, really rapidly. And again, if I uh, knock that up to 60%, 60% of the time the fan is on and 40% of the time the fan is off. And that's how it's controlling it. And in order to do that, the fan has a tiny little microchip in it that listens for this signal. And if I set the fan to 100%, the signal disappears because we're on all the time. We have just a solid line there. So that's how the PWM fan is controlled. And duty cycles and PWM is used in all kinds of things on the computer. It's used to control the speed of the fans. It can control the speed of your water cooling pump. It can control how your LEDs switch on and off. If you've got RGB, those lights will be switching on and off with a PWM cycle to make them brighter and darker. If you have an LED in your RGB fan, if you apply a duty cycle of 50% to it, the LED is going to flash on and off really quickly. But because of persistence of vision, you see steady light. But at a 50% duty cycle, half of the time, that LED is actually off. So it's going to appear to be much dimmer because there's not as much light coming out of it. But it's happening so fast that you can't see that flicker at all unless it's a really low flicker. So to demonstrate low PWM, all I have to do is show you my lights. So let me just switch off my face light for a moment. Now the lighting that's coming from above us, from my bench cap, uh, from my bench light, is on the mains, and our mains electricity here in the UK is 50 hertz. That's 50 times a second, as opposed to 23,000 times a second. So this light is flickering, but very, very slowly in the grand scheme of things. Now, if I turn off my camera's anti-flicker, can you see that strobing on your screen now? 
that's actually the light turning on and off rapidly. It's slightly out of phase with the camera, but you get the idea. However, because of persistence of vision, we don't see that. And what the camera can do is if I turn it into anti-flicker mode, the camera will synchronize its shutter speed with the 50 hertz hum from the light to ensure that it doesn't see that flicker. And any of my long-term watchers will remember not long after I got this camera, there was a problem with its firmware where the anti-flicker didn't work and there was always flickering. One more thing I forgot to mention while I was recording this video uh, is a question that doesn't come up very often but I have been asked before and that is can I connect a three pin fan into four pin headers like these? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely you can. So if I just turn the camera around slightly here. As you can see, the key tab on these connectors is offset to the left and that allows you to connect this three pin fan into the four pin header. And that might look wrong because there is a pin there that's not connected, but this is absolutely fine. That tab is deliberately left that size to allow you to connect this three pin fan header to it. And then the four pin connector also deliberately has an offset key tab. So when you plug that in, it also fits on the same tab and it occupies all four pins. The motherboard will automatically detect what kind of fan is connected because the motherboard can tell if there is a load on that fourth pin or not. And if it doesn't can detect anything connected to the fourth pin, it knows that you must have a three pin or voltage controlled fan connected and it'll automatically switch which method it's using on the fly. As you will see in my demonstration, you can manually select whether you're using um, voltage or PWM control in most fan controllers. However, nine times out of 10, leave, well, 99 times out of 100, leaving it on automatic is completely fine. And there we have it, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed that quick dive into what PWM fans do and how they work. And so now, obviously, the question still remains is what fans should you buy? Well, the answer to that is if you can afford it, PWM fans are worth every penny because not only can they spin faster and give you more airflow at maximum speed, but they can also spin slower and give you absolute silence at low speed when your temperatures are low. Three pin fans are going to be more than adequate at the high end. They will give you adequate cooling. But if you want to have really fine control over your fans for either super silent operation or absolute maximum speed, four pin fans will give you a much broader range of control than a three pin fan can. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.